wonderful evening, don't you think? What do you think, folks? You like it? Okay. What we have to go with this Cabernet Sauvignon is uh, a grilled Colorado lamb chop. There is no better lamb in the world than Colorado lamb. If it's born and raised in Colorado, the terroir there is absolutely wonderful and the lamb tastes great. Colorado lamb is by far the best. And all my guests here, there's 45 of us, if you've had a chance to taste this Colorado lamb, is you've got to say, oh my God, this is really good. That's how much difference there is. You could buy it, you just go to a meat market, and if you don't have it, they get it for you. It's not a problem for them to get it, whether they carry it normally or not, because unfortunately, restaurateurs and people that know about food know about it, but not all restaurants uh, you know, share that with you. They'll tell you about it on, your, on the wine list. But most importantly, everybody here has had a great time tasting three different dishes tonight. Coming out of the kitchen from my friend, Mike Gregson, who has come out of the kitchen to sit down with us for a couple minutes. How about a nice Thank hand you. for the chef? Thank you very much. You bet. Chef, tell me a little bit, how long have you been cooking? Because I can tell you, the quality of the food that you put out, you haven't been cooking for a week or two. No, it's been a while. It's been a couple months. I, I actually, <laughs> I, I graduated in 1988 from high school and went straight on to culinary and been cooking ever since. All right, so it's 1988. Well, I have to tell you, uh, wherever you've worked, and I guess I'm not going to take the time to find out all the different places, but when they came here, they searched you out, found you, hired you, and put you in the kitchen, and it's made this restaurant work. And the reason it works is because food like this comes out all the time. It's just a regular thing. How many people in the kitchen working with you? Uh, in the kitchen, there's about, there's 20 during service. Uh -huh. And then during the day, there's another, you know, five or six. Okay. Between the dishwashers and prep cooks. So, so it's, it's busy. Quite a team. Yeah, it's busy in the kitchen. That's a good thing. Now, you just opened another restaurant. Tell us a little bit about that. That's correct. We opened a, a burger restaurant called Rattle Can. It's right downstairs here at the Venetian. Um, it's, it's across from the sports book next to the poker room. We've been open uh, since mid-October. Uh -huh. And basically, we, we do very good burgers. Um, we're all about fresh pickles that we make there and uh, good shots. Boy, it's good. I have to tell you, my wife and I went down and had dinner after they opened to check it out. The burgers are outstanding. So if you're a burger fan, and I know that's probably one of the hottest things you can have in America right now is, is a burger joint, so to speak. Uh, but the burgers here, you know, you just don't go down to the store and buy ground beef, take it home and make a burger and say, this is wonderful. It doesn't work quite like that. There's a combination of types of beef that you put together, or some people use veal, some people even use pork with beef to make a flavor when it's cooked as a hamburger, it tastes completely different. Any, any uh, suggestions you might have for the average person? Well, what we use at the restaurant, it's pretty, pretty basic. It's an Angus burger. It's an 80-20, so 80% lean to 20% fat. And to be honest, we ate a lot of burgers to get to what we chose there at Rattle King. Right, we that's probably the way it tasted works. 50 different blends and mixes and quite a few different companies. It took a while. Right. Once we got the burger, then we had to decide on the proper bun, and that was a whole other process. <laughs> it really makes a difference how it all comes together. That's for sure. So if you want to try a Rattle Can, right downstairs is a great place to find out what a burger should taste like, and then you can compare the rest of them around town. I want to thank you for listening to Wines Is Your, America's number one syndicated wine radio show we're here each week at this very same time and if you've enjoyed this broadcast this broadcast tell everybody you know and uh, i want to tell you if you want to know more about my favorite subjects just log on to my website leskincade.com that's uh, also on facebook and on twitter i want to thank executive chef mike Gregson and his staff here at the uh, first food bar at the palazzo resort on the strip and i want to thank my Broadcast engineer Jeremy Knight, the Viasian TV crew, High Definition for making television in Las Vegas on Cox Cable, Direct TV, and all over Asia. All happened. Now, thank you for choosing and listening to Wines Is Your from the left coast, from the east coast, and from all around the world on the internet. From Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm Les Kincaid. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching Wines Du Jour. We're here at that beautiful uh, restaurant that I was telling you about, First Food. Remember when you come to Las Vegas, 
first food in the Palazzo Resort is a place to come. And also, when you go to your local wine store or you go to your local bar and want a glass of wine or a bottle of wine, look for Jay Lore. Try their Chardonnay, unbelievable. Their Pinot Noir, the most difficult grape to grow. Their Pinot is excellent from Paso Robles area and then Cabernet Sauvignon from Monterey. So thank you very much for watching. Come back and see us on Wines Azure in the future. Next time, good night.